Hello Divination and welcome. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to create text and images that change on scroll in Divi. This is the final result we're aiming to achieve. So without wasting a lot of time, let's dive in and let's get started. All right. So the first thing we need to do is to create a brand new page. So I'm going to come over here and click on add new. Next, we're going to give this page a name. I'm just going to call this design. Click on use Divi Builder. Now this technique I'm showing you can also be used on an existing page you just need to create a brand new section and also the images that we're going to use can be downloaded in the post which i'll link to in the show notes below all right so next i'm going to click here on build from scratch and i'm just going to close this for now because i want to go into the section settings and this is where i need to do a few settings okay so now that i have this selected the next step now is to come over here to background and then i'm going to click here on the image and then click on this plus button. So I already have my images here. So I'm going to go ahead and select my image. So the image I'm going to use is going to be this one right here. So I'm going to go ahead and select it. Upload an image. So now I have my image in the background. Next, we're going to come over here. Make sure the image is set to cover. And the background image repeat needs to be set to Y vertical. So I'm going to select Y vertical. Next, we're going to come over here to design and then we're going to go to spacing because here we need to set our padding. So our padding here is going to be 30% and this is going to be applied both to the top and the bottom. So I'm going to activate by clicking this change so the value can be applied to both sides, the top and the bottom. Next, I need to go to visibility. So I'm going to click here on advanced visibility. And here I need to make sure that I set my horizontal and vertical overflow to hidden. So I'm going to come over here and set this to hidden. Okay, so now that I have this all set, it's now time to add a new row. So I'm going to save this, click on this plus button, add my row. And I'm just going to close this for now and go into my row settings. So I'm going to come over here to the advanced tab, click on visibility. And I'm going to set this to hidden and vertical to hit it as well and then save next we're going to add a text module so i'm going to click here on this plus button and search for my text modules and select next over here in my body area i'm just going to add this text that says production team highlight it and set this to heading one next we're going to come over here and stylize heading one so i'm going to come over here to heading text and first of all we're going to find our font so i'm just going to search for it for a doc one on the weight we're going to set this to bold on the color we're going to set this to black and then on the text size here on the desktop we're going to set this to 100 then we might as well add our sizes for the other screen devices so for the ipad we're going to set this to 75 and then on the phone we are going to set this to 33. So now you can see that our text is much easier to read on all devices. Okay, so now that I've set my size, we're also going to do uh, some changes on the letter spacing. So over here on the desktop, we're going to set this to four pixels. And then we're just going to come over here and also go into the iPad, set this to three. And then finally on the phone, we're going to set this to two. So the next step now is to just switch over here to the desktop and go to our sizing because here we need to set our width and for our width here, normally it's set at 100%, I mean at auto. So we are going to set ours at 100% and then we're going to save. The next step is to add a new row. So I'm going to click here on this plus button. And before we add any modules, we're going to go into our row settings. And straight away, we're going to add our width. So I'm going to come over here to sizing and set my width here to 80%. And our maximum width now is going to be a thousand pixels. And let's head over here to visibility. And we are going to set both the overflow and the vertical overflow to hidden. Just like that. All right. So now that I have that set, we are also going to go in and uh, add a text module so let's go ahead and save here and in this row that we've just created we're going to add another text module so i'm just going to search for my text module and select it 
And in here, we're just going to replace this text with a text that says set photography. Now, I'm going to set this to heading 2. And let's head over here to the design tab and start designing this text. So I'm going to come over here to heading and make sure you're selecting the right tab. So now our font here is going to be bold. And we're going to use the font that we used before, Fridoka 1. And then moving on, we're going to uh, make this all caps. And our color here is going to be black. And now let's set our sizes. So on the desktop, we're going to set this to 50. And then going to go in for the tablet. This is going to be 40. And then finally, for the smartphone, this is going to be 28. All right, so, so far, we have added our main heading here and the set photography text. The next step now is to just set our letter spacing. And here we're going to, again, make sure we set our letter spacing on all the devices. So I'm going to start here on the desktop and set this to 3. Now, let's head over here to our margins. So I'm going to go to spacing. And here on spacing, I'm going to add a top and bottom margin of 0 pixels. Activate my chain here so the value can be applied both to the top and the bottom. So what we're going to do next is we're going to add our scroll effects. So I'm going to click here on advanced, scroll effects, and we're going to choose the fading in and out. So I'm going to select the tab, make sure you set it to yes. And then all I have to do now is to add my values. So here we just need to make sure that this is set to 0%. And then I'm going to drag this all the way down here to 42. But before I do that, I just need to split here. And this is going to be 53. And this one here is going to be 43. And now I can drag these handles here. And this one needs to be at 42. And this one here finally needs to be at 54. There we go. So I have everything all set now. That's looking great. I'm going to save this. And then we just need to duplicate this twice. So now all I have to do is to go in and rename uh, the second one here. So I'm going to click here. And instead of set photography, we're going to set this to art direction. And then we're going to come over here to advanced position. And in the position here, I'm going to set this to absolute. And we're going to choose the top left box here for the positioning. So the next step now is to adjust our scroll effects. So now I'm going to uh, click here on fading in and out. And make sure here it's set to 0%. So all I have to do now is to just make some minor adjustments. So this one here needs to be at 68. And here we need to be at 56. So I'm just going to drag this to the side a little bit so I can get enough space. So this one here needs to be at 68. And then this can be at 57 and 56. So this is looking good. I'm going to save. And then we're going to go to the next one. Click here on this gear icon, and we're going to change this from set photography to props and wardrobe. And then, just like what we did before, we're going to go in and set our position. So I'm going to come over here to advanced position, and this needs to be absolute as well. And the position top left. And then we're going to add our scroll effects. So I'm going to scroll all the way down here to scroll effects, and make sure you've chosen the right one. So what we're going to do now is making sure our ending opacity is set to zero. Now I have to do my adjustments. So my position here is going to be at 81. My position here is going to be at 80. And then 71. And then finally, the viewport bottom here needs to be at 70. There we go. We're going to save this. And then next we're going to add a square image module. So I'm going to click here on this plus button and search for my image module and select it. Next, I'm going to go into my media library now and choose my image. So I'm going to go ahead and select it. Now, if you want to use the exact same images as I'm using throughout this tutorial, I will leave a link to the post in the show notes below. And if you're using your own images, you want to make sure that uh, your sizes are 350 by 350. 
All right, so I'm gonna click upload an image and now you can see my image has been added. Next, we're gonna come over here to design alignment and make sure the image is aligned to the left. Now I'm gonna to go to spacing and set our margin to minus 60 because we want the image to just slightly go up a little bit. And we also don't need any spacing below the image. So make sure that you set this to no. And then we need to try and change this to black and white. So we're gonna come over here to filters and we're just going to go ahead and reduce the saturation all the way down to zero. Now it's time to go to advanced visibility. So here we're going to add our vertical and overflow and set it to hidden. And then we're going to go to our scroll effects. So the one that we need here is the fade in and out activated. And then what we need to do here, make sure that this starting opacity is set to zero. The midpoint needs to be 100 and the end opacity needs to be 100 as well. Now let's take a look at the positioning. Right, so the next step now for the midpoint, we're gonna set this to 71 and then the viewport bottom is going to be 70. All right, so this is pretty much done. We're gonna go ahead now and save. And then the next step now is to add a call to action module. So I'm gonna click here on this plus button. So I'm gonna search for it and select it. So there we go, we have the call to action and I'm just gonna override this and just add my dummy text in there. And, and then over here, we're just going to rename this and say Jason's art team. For the button, we're just gonna say book Jason's art team. All right, so now that I have these three elements all set, make sure that you add a link to the button because it won't show. So I'm gonna come over here to link and then we're just gonna add a dummy link. So now you can see as soon as I've done that, the button is now showing, but of course we need to go and customize it. So I'm just gonna fix this again one more time. There we go. All right, so now that I've added my link and my button is showing, we need to make sure the button, I mean, the background color here is not there. So I'm gonna come over here to background and just remove like that, add it to transparency, or you can just say no to use background color. Next, we're going to go to our text. So I'm gonna click here on design text and we're going to align to the right. And now let's stylize our heading text. So I'm gonna come over here. So we're just gonna be consistent here and use the same font we used for our heading. And then um, the text alignment here needs to be left. So I'm gonna go ahead and set it. And the color is going to be black. And there we go. So now it's showing. Now let's set our size to 48. And while we're here, we might as well set our sizes for the desktop, the tablet and the phone. So for the tablet, it's gonna be 42. And then on the phone, it is going to be 33. There we go. So that's looking much better now. Now let's head over to letter spacing. And here we're gonna set this to one. And for the line height, we're gonna set this to 1.1. Now let's go to our body text. So for our body text, we're just gonna scroll back up here and uh, select my body text. And this time this is going to be Vadana. So I'm gonna search for it here and select it. Next, our color here is going to be black so we can read it easier. And our size is fine at 14, but our letter spacing this time is going to be 0 0.5, just to make it a, bit, a little bit tighter. All right, so now that I've added all this, now let's style the button. So in order for us to style the button, we need to come all, all the way down here to the button, activate use custom styles for button. Now with that selected, we are going to now go in and start stylizing all of this. So first of all, our text color needs to be white. So I'm gonna go ahead and set it to white and our background color is going to be black. So now you can see our button is showing, but we're not done yet because we need to come over here to our letter spacing, and we're going to set this to one. Our font here is going to be Vadana, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, select it. And then we need to add our margins. So I'm gonna scroll all the way down here and set my top margin to 20 pixels. Now we are also going to add a top and bottom padding. So we need to give a bit more space inside the text here for our button. So this is going to be at 10 pixels, both for the top and the bottom. I know it's a slight change, but it works fine. Next, we're gonna add 25, and this is also going to be for the left and the right. So as you can see, our button is slightly bigger. Now, there's um, 
something that I did wrong and that is I need to fix my heading here. So I'm going to come back and this needs to be aligned to the right. All right, so now that we have this done, we are also going to uh, set our positioning. So we're going to come over here to advanced and then we're going to choose position. And what we're going to go with here is we're going to go with relative. So I'm going to go ahead and select it. Right, so with this all set, we're going to go to offset origin. We're going to set this to 25. And then we're also going to uh, come over here to our visibility and set our overflow to hidden. So go ahead and do that. Now let's go to the scroll effects. And again, we're going to keep this consistent and set it to fading in and out. Enable it. And this is where now we need to set our values. So here for the ending opacity, we're going to set this to zero. And we're now going to uh, set this to 80. So I'm just going to split the midpoint here. And we're going to drag it all the way up here to 80. And then 55. And 54. So now we can go ahead and save. All right, so um, if you want, you can go ahead and duplicate this and have different uh, information on the same page. But now it's time to take a look and see if this animation is working now. All right, so let's scroll and see if this is working now. So, so far, our set photography is showing and then it disappears. And as I'm scrolling, we can see props and wardrobe now shows up. And then our image and then our text over here so this is the row that i worked on so if you want to go ahead and duplicate this you can just position things on different sides and this will look something close to this so now you have your image now on the right and then we have our text here on the left And that's the final design. So there you have it. Thank you all for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and do follow us on our social media platforms. By doing so, you'll be notified every time we release new tutorials. Until next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.